Photogrammetry has been the go-to solution in the 3D world for quite some time. By allowing users to turn ordinary photographs into beautiful 3D models. And while it's been a lifesaver for many industries like game development, VFX, and ArcViz, let's face it, it's not without issues. From waiting for hours for the process to complete to getting awful 3D scans in some cases, which make it sometimes a real headache. But there is a new technology that is about to shake things up, and it is called Nerf. This revolutionary technology has the potential to transform 3D scanning as we know it by creating stunning 3D models faster and more accurately compared to ever before. So in today's video, we're going to explore this brand new technology and what makes it different compared to traditional 3D scanning. Before we continue, if you're interested in learning more about 3D and photogrammetry, I recommend you try Skillshare. You may know Skillshare for photography, video editing, and illustration classes, but it actually has many animation, game development, and VFX-focused stuff. For example, Smith Sculpt on Skillshare or Just Smith on YouTube created this great course on photogrammetry using only your phone and reality capture. This class is aimed at anyone and everyone, whether you are experienced or just you want to get your feet wet with the first time using only a phone and some free software. And the great thing is, you can access all of them great classes, all with the price of less than one course every month, let alone the ton of other classes at your disposal. So, the first 1000 people to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Nerf generates a flexible and dynamic structure called a radiance field by utilizing the power of machine learning. And just like photogrammetry, this enables us to generate photorealistic 3D representations from images and also videos. This radiance field allows us to see a render of objects from any angle, even those that were not captured in the original input data, as it guesses how the missing viewpoints will look like. And this is what's scary and exciting about it. Nerf and photogrammetry offer different pros and cons. One of the main benefits of Nerf is its efficiency and speed, as it is faster and a more intelligent technique, so to speak. It can create a 3D model from just few images compared to photogrammetry, which requires a large number of high quality photos from the biggest amount of angles. Additionally, Nerf can capture dynamic objects in motion in other terms, animated models, while traditional 3D scanning is limited to static object. This is because Nerf can use videos as input as we previously mentioned. However, photogrammetry remains widely used and understood in various industries, plus it offers more universal file formats, making it a tried and tested alternative for those who prefer a more established approach. Nerf takes a unique approach to construct scenes, but first of all, we start the process in a similar way to photogrammetry, since the first step involves capturing images or videos of the desired object. While it doesn't have to be the same amount of photos compared to photogrammetry, it never hurts to have extra data. Once your software starts processing the data to predict or let's say to produce a volumetric representation of the scene, it uses what is known as neural network a machine learning algorithm that is trained to generate the radiance field of the scene from the provided data while guessing and filling the missing viewpoints. The process is much more complicated than that, but this more or less can sum it up. This allows for highly realistic renders that can be viewed from any angle. In a sense, a radiance field is an image or a video that could be viewed from all angles. Rather than traditional 3D geometry, making the implementation of Nerf data a bit harder for traditional 3D software currently. Nevertheless, there are ways to convert the data, and with future improvements, the expectations are high for more efficient workflows. When it comes to quality, both Nerf and photogrammetry have their strengths and weaknesses. Generally speaking, Nerf produces highly realistic and detailed 3D renders, especially for objects with complex geometry and appearance. This is because Nerf can capture subtle details and it can do it better with fewer data points, as well as the ability to generate reflective 3D models, which is something photogrammetry can do right now. In addition to the ability to render and change the light, 
on top of having the ability to fill the missing viewpoints, all of which are elements that makes Nerf more pleasant to work with as well as being able to generate animated objects. On the other hand, photogrammetry is generally better suited for real-time productions, since anything that needs geometry-based data has to go through photogrammetry at the moment, just because it seems more efficient in my opinion, rather than generating Nerf data and then being converted into a 3D mesh. And despite not being as detailed or as smart, it is still a great solution that can give you a good result, and Quixel's mega scans are the best proof of that. From a VFX standpoint, Nerf is a game changer that holds enormous potential. In the industry, the final result is all that matters, and Nerf's ability to create highly realistic 3D models with limited data is a significant breakthrough. By leveraging Nerf, VFX artists can generate stunning 3D models with a speed and a degree of accuracy and detail that was previously impossible, which they can then use to create worlds or backgrounds or even hero assets. It also enables us to integrate real-life filming locations into the digital realm, which makes the possibilities of creative expansions endless, because it's much easier to integrate CGI that way, especially when we add some nerves features such as relighting, as well as making tasks like tracking much more pleasant in general, at least in theory. And even though the current motion technology is limited, imagine the possibilities of capturing the entire scene of actors performing in 3D. The idea itself is mind-blowing, but only time will tell how effective it will be. In the world of gaming, however, integrating new technologies can be a challenge. When it comes to Nerf, the main obstacle is the fact that the game engines predominantly use 3D Mesh, which are based on triangular faces, and Nerf being a different type of data makes it quite hard to integrate seamlessly. While there are ways to convert this data, the process of converting a Nerf model into geometry involves extracting the positional data from the Nerf model and using it to create a 3D Mesh. While this method can be effective, it is not without its limitations, meaning you have to fix and optimize the generated geometry, which is anything other than straightforward. This presents a significant challenge for game developers who must invest additional time and effort to ensure that the models run smoothly without an issue. But despite these challenges, it is clear that Nerf technology has the potential to revolutionize the gaming industry and with the time and continued development, it may be possible to create engines that are specifically designed to work with Nerf data, paving the way for a new generation of immersive and realistic gaming experience. In fact, we have something that is working towards this direction, which is the new technology of Unreal Engine 5, that allows us to bring meshes directly to the engine without optimization, retopology, or UVs, which is just amazing. So, the path ahead might be difficult, but the rewards could be extraordinary, and it is exciting to think about the possibilities that the future can hold. On the other hand, when it comes to Nerf generated models, it is not all sunshine and rainbows. While these models can look incredibly realistic, there are significant challenges that we must overcome. First, one of the most pressing limitations is the need for a massive amount of training data to generate high quality models. Unfortunately, Obtaining this data ethically can be difficult, and using stolen data from other artists and people in general is not acceptable at today's standards, and a lot of people can find an issue with it. Additionally, some inconsistencies in light and the shadows can be a bit of a headache for users, but hey, that's a minor issue compared to the downright ugly artifacts that can arise from photogrammetry work. And while there have been some exciting innovations with Nerf's ability to capture motion scenes, there is still a long way to go in this area, and some heavy development is still required. To make matters worse, there aren't a lot of user-friendly software or even platforms for creating Nerf-generated models. But just keep in mind guys that we didn't present these limitations to dishearten any of you. It is just a showcase that technology is still brand new and some work is still needed before it can become as efficient as possible. Nevertheless, it is still an exciting and promising innovation, and we are looking forward to witness its evolution towards becoming the standard and what people actually use. It's hard to deny that Nerf technology is a game changer when it comes to 3D, 
while some might argue that it is a replacement, I would say it is more of an upgrade. Think about it. Nerf provides all the benefits of photogrammetry with many added benefits. And of course, it's not like that photogrammetry is gonna disappear overnight, since it is a well-established part of many pipelines in different industries. And this is for a good reason, since it provides geometry-based message directly and it is easy to work with it. Having said that, while traditional photogrammetry may still have a place in some workflows, in my opinion, 3D scanning may be going in a different direction, which is the Nerf direction. And probably in the coming years, especially we are seeing the rise of AI, there is a great potential for this technology, and this may make Nerf the dominant technology in 3D scanning and creating 3D assets using data capture technology. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.